uh, Anamwa Mensa on that same uh, bit. How, just how historic is it, uh, this, this uh, latest happening? How historic, how momentous is it? Well, I think it's very, very historic. Uh, <clears throat> this is the first time that, uh, you know, uh, um, education system, we have a national teacher's standards. Mm. We've been training teachers on different types of standards. Now we have standards that really speak to the kind of teachers we want to uh, have in Ghana. And uh, these teachers should be to have a professional knowledge, professional attitudes and values, and they should have a uh, professional practice. You know, so these three, you know, combine together to give us, you know, uh, and, and I don't think, you know, we, we are one of the countries that has, you know, this kind of uh, teach, national teacher standard that speaks to the kind of teachers we want in your community. You know? And uh, um, there are many things that go with it, you know, creating and even teachers, making sure that uh, issues of gender uh, biases and stereotyping is removed from the system, issues of uh, using, you know, technology in education, uh, in teaching and learning, you know, is also embraced in it, you know, so we have uh, uh, quite a lot of things and, and it, it came also with a different kind of way when we have now five universities actually, you know, Pretending the uh, uh, the, the training of, of teachers, you mm. know, you know, like the beginning, it's, it's a, 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 a strength, and you know, so that we can create something that Ghana needs. Let me bring in Dr. Nyameche on this beat as well. Uh, I mean, we've witnessed several transformations in our educational system. What exactly was the systemic problem that necessitated this change, which we are celebrating now? Thank you very much for having us. Uh, fortunately, the uh, two professors who have spoken before me have actually given us what used to be the case, where we are now, and where we hope to go to. Right. Um, the case used to be that um, our teachers before uh, this new program had uh, the opportunity of doing just two programs. Only a few colleges offered early grade, and then the rest did something else. And so when they leave school, they are either sent to the primary or the junior high schools. But now we have quite a number of colleges pursuing early grade programs. We have all colleges doing primary education, and then all colleges also pursue uh, junior high school education. So at the end of the day, the expectation is that when these students come out of uh, training, they would be able to competently teach in these areas where they have specialized. Because from semester one, first year, to the final semester, they do practical training throughout uh, these programs. That used not to be the case. And because of the practical nature of the programs they are doing now, the expectation is that once they complete, they would be able to transmit whatever it is that they have learned to the students that will be given to them to teach in the basic schools. Um, uh, Prof. Salifu, I'll come to you on that you know, self-same point, but from a different angle. What is unique about this Bachelor of Education program? What makes it stand out? I mean, the University of Education, whenever it comes to mind, and what it's been producing, what makes this particular program stand out? Okay, so uh, I think some of the features have been uh, articulated already. So the first thing is that uh, in terms of the focus on the practical training, so the teacher from day one, uh, as part of the curriculum from level 100 to level 400, is constantly engaged in one aspect of the practical training or the other. Right. That's the first one. The second one is that we are not training generalist uh, teachers. This is based on specialisms now. So okay. you focus on early grades, or you focus on primary education, or you do GHS, you know, which are based on specific uh, subjects that you specialize in. So these are very important uh, features of, of, of this program. The other part which uh, I think uh, Prof alluded to was that um, this is based on very specific standards. So we have an expectation of what 
a teacher must be, you know, in the classroom. Right. The kind of competencies that this person must have. How do we roll that out in the curriculum and in the instruction in preparing these teachers in such a way that by the time they come out, they are equipped with these standards. So the national uh, 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 teachers uh, standards and then the assessment policy, uh, which we develop, are supposed to make sure that they keep them on track. So by the time they get out, they would have had those competencies, you know, which uh, uh, drive them. So, so this is very unique in, in, in all those uh, respects. And right. we've also invested a lot of time and effort in upgrading the governance system within the colleges and then also uh, building the capacity of the teachers who are teaching the pre-service teachers uh, in terms of the colleges of education uh, and teachers. Uh, a lot has gone in there in terms of improving the governance and uh, giving them certain policy instruments that would make the system truly uh, tertiary and, and be able to deliver. Uh, thank you, Prof. Let, let me bring in Dr. Nyamisha. You just heard Prof talk about the competencies and how they would be enhanced. But what are the new teaching methods that are going to be brought to bear with these teachers? And how are, they, are we going to ensure that they are able to impart same in the classroom? What's the plan? Hello, Dr. Nyamisha. Are you with us? Can you hear me? Yes, yes I, I can, can hear, hear you now. Please go ahead. I, I lost the last part of your... So I was asking, uh, especially as Professor Salifu is talking about the competencies that will be enhanced, I am, I am asking, what are the new methods that you're going to bring to bear in teaching these uh, students, and, and how exactly, what is the plan to help them pass this on in the classroom? Well, I, I, I indicated earlier on that um, with the new teaching methods, the case used to be that um, students would do practical work mainly only in the final year. Right. This time, once they come to school, very first semester, they do these things. They do observation, they, they practice how to teach, they live in their communities around the various colleges. And then once they are going through all of these, the expectation is that they would master the art of doing practical teaching in sort of the, uh, the, the, the theories that we are used to having. Hmm. And then each college now has a room where we refer, which to, uh, the rooms we refer to as the uh, uh, teaching learning material storeroom, where students are expected to do all kinds of uh, teaching materials. These are stored in there. As and when they are needed, they are sent to the schools there, and then they are used to teach. And the teaching is also hands-on this time, even with the people that this, uh, the, our trainee teachers are supposed to to be teaching. They are expected to do hands-on activities. And once they're able to do this, they master the art of whatever it is that they are being taught. And once they master this, it won't be, as I indicated earlier, theory as usual. This time, the students understand the concepts that they are taught because the teachers themselves have been taking through training programs to be able to uh, impart this to the students that they will be teaching. Mm. Uh, before I bring in Professor uh, Anamwa Mensah, let me bring in Professor Salifu. You started with this cohort uh, in 2018 in terms of this Bachelor of Education program. What were the challenges faced? How did you surmount them, Professor Salifu? Uh, okay, I think the most immediate one, which I, I believe you remember, was our uh, issues with the college teaching uh, staff association. Mm. Uh, because yeah, we had had this ambitious program planned, you know, and uh, at the point of rolling out, and uh, they had issues about conditions of service, and you know, so it kind of uh, it was a hiccup, you know, uh, in terms of rolling out from the beginning. Mm. Uh, we also had a, a few issues about infrastructure, and then the staffing capacity uh, in the in the uh, colleges of education. And uh, so we had to contend with these things as part of the planning and adaptation process and rolling out the program. So the training the colleges of education to the universities uh, was based on the plan that, you know, the colleges will be delivering programs in these specialism areas and the universities were identified uh, in terms of the kind of specialization they bring to the table. 
So we needed a partnership between the universities and the colleges to deliver that, built on a certain memorandum of understanding which uh, GTEC uh, uh, moderated. So it kind of solved the human resource capacity uh, issue. And a few, a couple of investments have been made in terms of uh, some basic infrastructure. And in addition, as I said, capacity building for the teachers you know, who needed to deliver within the colleges of education. It's an ongoing process, I must say, and you know we are still very much involved in uh, rolling out the program as as planned. Mm. Uh, Professor Anna Mohamed, so we know that in 2018 the affiliation took place, uh, and, and these institutions were paired with, if you like, the five public uh, tertiary institutions. I'm talking about UG, UCC, KNUSD, UDS, UEW. Uh, what has been the impact of this affiliation? Well, um, I think the most important thing is that uh, the university is uh, bringing the experiences, you know, in really uh, mentoring, uh, because some, all of them have been mentored in colleges, uh, university colleges. So they bring in that experience, but then they also bring in the experience that uh, um, the um, UCC, for example, UEW, uh, all have in training teachers. So uh, this is a, a collaborative thing where you have the, the, um, these college uh, universities teaming up and working together to ensure that uh, they're all on the same you know, uh, wavelength and be able to ensure that uh, the proper thing was done. You know. And one of the most important thing was to put the, uh, the student that the teachers who were, doing, who were being trained were going mm. to teach at the center of the of the of the whole curriculum, and then the teacher himself being also at the centre, you know, so that uh, we show that uh, when the teacher goes out into the field after graduation, we'll be able to you know transfer you know, whatever being been taught him you know, over there. Because in the curriculum, we ensure that uh, you know they apply what they are learning into to to the students in the field, you know. So, so these were all put in place to ensure that this is done. And the universities have done so, so, so well with them. Mm. The organized trainings and workshops and so on, and then bring them up so that they understand even the university system, how it works and so on. So some of them are part of their academic boards and so on, you know, helping them, you know, you know like holding hands, you know, so that they can progress as they as go along. Uh, before we talk about World Teachers Day, let me bring in uh, Dr. Nyamiche just on this point. So there are national teacher standards, the NTS, and uh, there is a definition of who a good teacher, uh, whom a good teacher is. Uh, how well has the NTS prepared these student teachers to effectively deliver on that mandate? Dr. Nyamiche? Uh, it appears we don't have Dr. Yamiche at the moment. So maybe, gentlemen, we can wrap the conversation on uh, today being World Teachers Day. What message do you have for all pre-service, in-service, and beginning teachers across the country? I'll come to all of you who are online with us for a quick message on that. I'll start with Professor Salifu. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we can only take um, uh, the opportunity to uh, send words of congratulations to our teachers uh, who have been very, very critical in the preparation of our uh, uh, human resource. Right. Um, as you will, you will notice from the uh, theme for the celebration, I say the transformation of education begins with the teacher. It appears um, we, we caught the cue you know, a long time ago, and this is what led to the uh, packaging of this BA program and uh, the current progress that we are making. Uh, we congratulate them, but we look forward uh, very much to the impact that they will be making as they come up. It will take a couple of years before we see the real impact because it has to manifest in the eventual learning outcomes. And so we are keeping a close watch on that to see uh, the difference that the BA program uh, would make. Congratulations to all our teachers, and uh, I must uh, say that uh, we love them. We love them. They should continue with their hard work. 
Professor Alifu, we're grateful you could join the conversation. Let me let me go on to Professor Anamwa Mensa. Uh, your take on World Teachers yeah. Day? Thank you very much. Uh, I, I just want to add my voice to that. That uh, congratulations to all the teachers. They are what I call the nation builders, the true nation builders. Without the teachers, there are no other profession. So they are the real nation builders, and we need to recognize that and we. That we congratulate them for all the efforts they are putting in inside their classrooms to turn the kids around, the students around, and make them better you know, citizens of this country. We thank them for their uh, uh, sacrifices in various ways. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Anamwa Mensa. Uh, if, if we have uh, Dr. Nyamiche, we'll take your, your thoughts on World Teachers' Day. Thank but you very we... much. Uh, sorry, sorry, I, I lost out uh, a bit. Mm. I, I, we are anxiously excited about what the future holds, especially with the introduction of the new BEAD program. We know it will succeed, but we want to see how it works out. And I would want, again, my colleagues have said that already, to congratulate all teachers for what they have done and what they, what they are continuously doing for Madagana. We wish them and all of us very best. Thank you. Thank you so much. And of course, we know that for the first time in our history, we're going to produce our first cohort of Bachelor of Education graduates. Well, uh, joining us for that conversation, Professor Joseph Anamwamen, our board chair, Transforming Teaching, Education and Learning. He joined the conversation. We also had Dr. Emmanuel Nyameche, Principal, Akrokeri uh, College of Education, and then Professor Mohamed Salifu, Director General, Ghana Tertiary Education Commission. Well, it's Wednesday. And you know, every Wednesday, courtesy of Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank, we have eight.